after the flight he came back and told a few people Damina is so broke Damina is so poor he cannot even afford business class ticket I hello my wonderful viewers welcome back to my channel Agapin TV still your favorite TV please hit the subscribe button if this is your first time coming to my channel all right guys in the edition of today's video we are here with the man of God Dr. Abel Damina as he goes ahead to narrate the experience he had with um, a Nigerian pastor who who um, later came to mock him after paying for um, his business class trip to America. According to him, this pastor saw him seated in an economic class and the pastor offered to pay for a business um, ticket, business class ticket, which he did. But when he came back to Nigeria, he overheard things that the pastor has said about him. When I stopped preaching the other gospel in this church, and most of you were here, and I began to preach Christ, and I began to say, tithing is not New Testament, and all of that, you know, everyone that was in this church stopped paying tithes, and naturally stopped giving. Yeah, all of you here, you stopped giving. You started dropping flimsy change, change from Kekena Pep. You just drop it. So now, I'm not putting it on you, but at the same time, I'm rebuking you. And the rebuke is for those who are still dropping change money, because there's no tithe. So it means in the first place you were never giving to God. You were giving to yourself. Because the reason why you were giving is so that devourers will not come. So it was for self-preservation. It was not because you loved God. Because if it was God you were giving to and you discover that there's no problem that will happen, you will still be giving. But you gave because you were in fear. If you don't tight, it will be tight. If you don't tight, Satan will come. Devourers will come. So because of that you were religiously bringing tight. Religiously, as soon as your salary comes out, ten percent. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. I don't want trouble. So you were faithful. When I now say no, trouble will not come. God is not a monster. He's not New Testament. All that. Else. Okay, no problem. So now we can give God any how we like. So he started dropping because you you were never a generous person. Number one. Number two. You were never in love with the purpose of God. You were only in love with your selfishness. And if you are still giving like that, I put it to your face straight, not behind you. You are a selfish person. Because it means you have not understood the riches of God's grace. Now, anyways, back to the story. So, all the finances stopped and we are just having little, little monies, barely enough to buy half of the diesel to run our generator for services. So, we couldn't pay for Kingdom Life Network anymore. Even our staff salaries, we couldn't pay. So, we started thinking, should we drop all the staff? But if we drop all the staff, me ministry will not go on. So mama and I started calculating what do we do? And things were really getting really tight and really bad and really tough. But we never told you, we just come to church, smile, teach you the word of God, go home and just pray and just walk with God in our experience. So mama said to me, honey, we are not impressing anybody. At this level, we have gone past impressing people. Let's shut down the TV station. Let's shut it down. If God makes money available in the future, we go back. We are not in competition. I said, correct. We shut down television. We came to the office. Mama said, well, let's look around. If there's any staff that we can do without, we can send them packing. Any staff that can do two, three things, can sack the other two and keep the work. So we started doing all of that. We started downsizing everything. Downsizing everything. No vacation. We decided we will not go on vacation. We'll just stay in New York and be happy in our house. Things were really bad. A lot of people started saying, Dr. Damina, can't you see God punishing? Can't you see? He now is preaching heresy. He can't even pay television. He can't do anything. See? His ministry is closed. And they were rejoicing and celebrating. And I was walking with God in our experience. Step by step. Impressing nobody. Not in competition with anybody. Just walking with God. And we were not angry. We were happy. We come to church, teach you the word of God, bless you. Study, study, study. Then we began to teach generosity. And a number of you began to wake up to your responsibility. And began to give. And God began to steer up people all over the world. Who are feeding from this church. And benefiting from this ministry. To start intentionally supporting us. 
And then we were in America to preach. Two years after Kingdom Life Network is down, they're insulting me everywhere. I even called one of my spiritual sons, I remember, one of those Januaries as the New Year was starting, I called him and I said, let's talk. I don't like this message you are preaching. I taught you and I want to correct it because that's not the gospel. After I finished talking with him in the hotel room for a while, he looked me into the face, my own spiritual son. He said, Papa, this new thing you are preaching, I will not preach it till I, till I see how it is working for you. Can't you see your TV station is down? Can't you see all your things are packing up? Then you want me to join you? He told me to my face. And I looked at him and I said, well, if you're waiting to see how this message would benefit me, you may never see it because my priorities have changed. For you, it's about cars, houses, clothes, and all of that. For me, it's about souls and the kingdom. So me and you have no alignment. So if you're waiting to see me displaying cars and displaying all of that, I won't do it. That would, wouldn't mean that it is not working for me. So then, every time I come to this pulpit, if you all remember, Kingdom Life Network was off. I would say, we want to welcome every one of you watching this service by way of Kingdom Life. I never stopped saying that. I kept saying that. I was working with God in our experience. Because I knew it was going to come back. So we got to America with Mama. And then one of the ladies who just got saved and caught the fire of what we were preaching met us in America. She came with her family, greeted us, celebrated tell what God has done. Her life has changed and everything. Then she looked at me and said, Dr. Damina, God brought me to help you pay the bills. So I said, the first bills is television. She said, I will pay for the next one year. How much is it? I gave her the bill. She wrote the check and gave me right there. And we paid for KLN one year ahead. And the television station is on. We walk with God in our experience. Now, KLN is not only back. It's one year and a half now. We are on seven radio stations every day. Me Millions every month. Now our staff are being paid without stress. Everything is back, but now not after the former order, but after a new order because we just work with God in our experience. Now all those guys that were laughing at me, their own TV stations are down. One of them said to me, I can't even pay school fees. I can't even pay school fees. Papa, times are tough. So I closed it down. The same person who told me, I will not preach it till I see how it is benefiting you. Can't you see your TV station is down. His own has been down now for one year and a half and his problem is even to pay school fees. Even with the wayo wayo gospel is preaching. Even with the wayo wayo tight intimidating people using prophecy wayo prophecy to collect money. He cannot even pay school fees. Refuse to quit. Say I am long suffering. Say it again. I am long suffering. Kenneth Hagin said when you are ready to wait forever you don't wait for too long. So if you are not patient. Little thing you don't begin the change to we went through rough financial times for close to four five years and you didn't hear any pin from our mouth Bim, you didn't hear Bim, you didn't hear Bim, i will come to this pulpit and teach as if the whole money in the world is in my house Bim, and i didn't do fundraising i didn't do fundraising the offering you gave we took it gave thanks applied it where it could be applied the monies people gave to me i put it in without you knowing all my money all my money even till now even till now even till now some of you know we're on radio seven hours i mean 11 hours every day i don't want to say something you think it's the offerings here that are paying for radio broadcasts ask the finance people how much is the offerings sometimes those offerings are not up to four hundred thousand in a whole service times four that's 1.2 it doesn't pay for one radio station because one radio station is 1.3 million one let me put it to you and it's not to make you feel bad though it is to be a witness with your spirit that i'm saying what i'm saying it's not about it's not about making you feel bad. What will I gain from you feeling bad? Nothing. It's to put it to you. So you wake up. We have work. I have literally personally paid for the radio stations. This one and a half years. Personally. All of them. From my personal income. Say, How are you getting money? The way you also get money. A few times, one or two or, or three of you have paid for one station. Maybe once or twice. The rest has been me paying everything till now. Till now. Monies I will have used to do things for myself and my family. I put it back 
into this course because I believe in this course. We were alive on radio throughout lockdown when there was no church. So where was the money coming from? There was no services. You were all in your houses. And I was still laboring here every day for hours. Where did the money come from? But let's think a bit. We are reaching the whole world. I remember one of those times we were down financially. I was traveling out of the country to go and preach, to preach a conference. I think it was Power City, America. I didn't have money to buy a business class ticket. So I bought an economy ticket to fly to America. It's been a long time I flew economy, but I needed to do it. So I bought my economy ticket, got into the aircraft, and I just sat in the economy section, and I was calculating how my legs would be like this till I get to America 13 hours, and I'm going to be preaching. While I was calculating my, my, my cost, a man of God, I won't call his name in this country, came into the aircraft and looked around, and then, I don't know what pushed him, he came to the economy compartment, and he saw me, Damina, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? I said, I didn't have money to buy business class now. He said, no, 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 don't say that. I said, no, I don't pretend. I didn't have money to buy business class. This is what I could afford. He said, no, Damina, don't talk like that. He went to business class. He was flying with about 14 of his boys. All of them were in business class. He took one of them and said, you come, sit here. Damina, come, sit here. I carry my box quickly. I don't belong there. I belong here. I sat there and said, eh, 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 eh. this feels like it. Then the air hostess came. I said, can we give you something to drink? I said, bring everything you have in there. I'm not here by, by power. I'm not here by might. I'm here by the spirit. Bring everything in there. After the flight, he came back and told a few people, Damina is so broke. Damina is so poor. He cannot even afford business class ticket. I was the one. I had to get one of my boys to move seat for him. They started mocking me. I said, no problem. Me, I flew business class and I ate the food. If you like, yab. You are yab. I ate. You are yabbing. I enjoy the flight. But it concerns me. But it concerns Is it my fault? They thought I would feel bad. I use it to laugh at them. It shows you that God is looking after me. Even in the economy, he, he relocated me. I didn't feel bad. <laughs> I'm not feeling bad. No condition is permanent. I didn't say the Bible says. I just said no condition is permanent. I thought your devil say no condition is permanent. Did he change my anointing? Did he remove the grace of God? I know how to appease. And I know how to abound. In whatever state I find myself, I have learned to be content. Because godliness with contentment is great gain. For it is certain we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we will take nothing out of this world. Therefore, having food and clothes, let us deal with the content. Glory to God. A man's life does not, does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. Yeah, this is not all of you. The future is glorious. Can you see? Look well. Can you see? Look again. Look again. Can you see? Now look one more time. Can you see? What does the future look like? The path of the righteous is as the shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Lift your two hands and give God thanks for what he has done in your life and what he's doing in your future. Just go ahead and give him praise. Open your mouth and give thanks. Open your mouth and worship him. Open your mouth and praise him for his word. Praise him for his word. Praise him for his word. Praise him for building you up. Praise him for equipping you. La cronta sikele de baba. Le crodo jekele de mambro. Rakotome kalina manoko rotusa kalana. Engebo shaka yanamaha. Praise you, Father. In the name of Jesus.